Welcome to Roast My Ride. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's not Roast My Ride, it's Rape My Ride, Francis. I bought the flames and everything to use. It took me ages. It's Rape My Ride. We sent an email out and asked you guys to submit your bikes. You very kindly did in droves, and we are going to run through some of them and tell you what we think of them. First up, we have a Genesis Fujio from James from Edinburgh. It's a Genesis. Gravel tyres, WWTB gravel tyres, one by bar bag on the front, saddle bag, dropper post. Dropper post. But very, very little drop, almost so insignificant. Is it really going to make no, a difference? No, I disagree with you. Yeah. Have you ever used a short travel dropper post like that? Shortish. It yeah. is surprising the amount of difference it makes. I very quickly after getting a dropper post got rid of a dropper post. What did you do with it? Sold it. Was it an 800 pound surround one? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Why? I would have bought it from you. <laughs> I love a dropper post. It's one of the best upgrades you can make to an off-road bike. I, I'm the absolute opposite. A mountain bike, yes. A gravel bike, waste of money. Getting the saddle out of the way means way more control. Especially on a gravel bike where the geometries don't lend themselves to being pushing you backwards and making you in like a, a nicely weight distributed position for off-road tracks. And this guy has fairly wide tires on there. He's gonna be riding on some pretty gnarly stuff. He's gonna be doing Vieri gravel, Nick Vieri style gravel, which is dangerous. Sensible bar bag, one by GRX. It's, all, it's very neat, isn't it? It's very neat. It's not slammed, but it just looks really neat. That is a well thought about and put together bike. It looks like, it, it gives me 90s mountain bike vibe. Yeah, 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 for sure. Most importantly, I note that he is at the pub and has probably just about finished his beer. So I, maybe your theory is incorrect. Maybe he's not actually riding on mountain bike paths. Maybe he rides to the pub, which is down a 31% steep hill yeah, and the dropper is necessary to lower his center of gravity so he can get to the pub there. Or he has to ride home that way after the beers and the lower center of gravity means he's less likely to crash on his face. Or by the time he goes home in the night, he's shrunk an inch. Shrunk an inch. Inch. Oh. The word is inch. You know how you like to tell people that you're five, 10 in the morning, five, nine in the evening? Shrunk an inch, shrunk an inch. Oh for God's sake. <laughs> Jimmy, it's 7.35 in the morning. I haven't woken up yet. I'm gonna give that, I'm knocking it down to six and a half out of 10 because the dropper post is stupid. I'm adding points for the dropper post, so I'm gonna give that an eight. Next! Next up, we've got Luke's 2023 Cannondale Topstone. It's an aluminium frame, GRX cranks, upgraded from the stock FSA ones, which were made out of melted cheese. <laughs> Vel carbon grab, it's true. <laughs> Carb Vel carbon gravel wheels, not for the gains, just because they look mint. Carbon seat post from China. Some dirt cheap but super comfy bars from Planet X. Aero bars were put on temporarily for the Frontier 300, which is a 300k gravel race in the Scottish borders. That's a sensible addition for a race that long. Topstone's great. Uh, that is... Okay, so that doesn't have the King Ping suspension. So Emily's got a Topstone. This looks sick. It actually, it looks like a road bike, particularly with the drop stays. You know, I've always given Cannondale a hard time for using Helvetica on the sides of their bikes. However, when it is that small, it looks really good. Mm. I'm, I'm a big fan of clip-on aero bars. I like the raw, raw sort of it's very nice, metal it? look, yeah. It do, I don't look at that and go, I'm really excited. I would love to go and ride that. But I look at that and go, that person's gonna have a great time. Unless he rides 300K on it, where I'm sure he has a shit time. With aero bars. <laughs> Makes it slightly less shit. I have to, I've never tried, Air, clip on aero bars on gravel before. Actually, I did. Yeah, you did. With, with the <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, fine, with the suspension stem. Yeah, <laughs> that was mint. Depends what the gravel was like. They were banned from Garmin Unbound, despite it being a very non-technical course, because still people were having accidents. But it's because people were using them in bunches with other people around. Ooh. And that kind of race will probably, you will end up riding on wheels and that yeah. kind of thing. So there's always that to consider, because you're away from the brakes. Yeah. And then it's, you can't react to something mm -hmm. uh, quickly. Yeah, you, sh you should never be on, on the aero bars. Not really. In a bunch. But, but, well, but if you have them, it's so much faster. So if you're in a race, of course you would. Not in a bunch. If you're in if a bunch, you are you're racing, in a bunch. you're racing. Yeah, but you're in a bunch. So you don't need the extra benefit of being on aero bars. <laughs> well, they, apparently they, the gravel racers do. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> I give that a 6.5. Oh, that sounds, that seems, Hush. Well, I don't... It's like that guy that rates pizzas online and, he's, and they always end up really low, but maybe he's just realistic. Well, I, th I think, if you think, I'm five, too generous five out of ten is 
hmm, fine. 10 out of 10 is like the best bike in the world. One out of 10 is a piece of junk. It's 6.5. I'm going seven, because I'm a big fan of clip-on bars, and it's out, of, well, it's not out of box thinking, but it's like, there's, you don't see bikes look like that very often. Mm. Next up, we've got Tarix Specialized Venge Pro. Uh, they don't make this anymore. They don't make a Specialized Venge anymore. Is this not making Venges? Yeah, they got, they only do one like racing bike and it's the Tarmac, which is aero, it's, it's aero light. So Tarek says that he got the Pro because he couldn't afford the S-Works like nearly everyone. That is true. I probably, it's nearly exactly the same. It doesn't look as cool because it doesn't have S-Works written on the side, which is a good logo. But you could just sand it down and then put the S-Works stickers over the top. Yes, yeah, yeah. Or just put the sticker straight over the top. So it's Altegra 2 by Roval Wheels. Uh... Who are one of the few wheel brands to stick with hooked rims. And they list it on there as a, as a selling point on their website. I guess there is a lot They're of like, bad- We're still hooked. There's lots of bad publicity, isn't there, around hookless. Yeah. So that's perhaps a selling point to mm -hmm. some people. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Amber walls that are not amber. What colour do you call that? It's like you know, okay, right, I've yellow. got a thing about tan walls. Yeah. Tyres we have here, Hutchinson's, why are they brown? The tan walls should be tan. Those tan walls, it's the other end of the scale. They're like yellowy beige. Yeah. It's like, it's like the, the kind of tea you don't want to drink. The ones that are the best are... <laughs> I just realised that is, tea is the spectrum. Like, those are too brown. You don't want to drink a tea that colour, it's no, too yeah. strong. And you don't want to drink a tea that colour. Yeah. The, the ones I actually think are the best looking tan walls, and this might upset people, are the specialised ones. They do specialised cotton. Is that not these though? Surely that's a specialised tyre. That looks like a Vittoria. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Hey, I know my tan walls. Could be, it could my be. My eyesight's pretty bad. Especially at this time in the morning. Does it get better as the day goes on? <laughs> yeah, like I get shorter. Uh, if I stay up long enough, I end up one foot tall, but with laser beam eyes. <laughs> so we've got Altegra Di2, the newest ver... Oh no, is it? 2019. No, no, no. That's, 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 that's 11 speed. speed. So yeah. that's a crank that might fall apart. Uh, specialized power saddle, I think. He's put some stickers on it, which is probably bad for resale, but makes you feel a bit more like it's yours. You can it's... remove a sticker. Yeah, but what if it pulls the paint off? Depends how sticky, how sticky the sticker is. And how good the paint is. Really sticky. It's it's fine. It doesn't excite me as a bike. And it's not, I, I'm not a fan of aero bikes because I live somewhere that's hideously hilly. That is a London bike for me. Plus one for the tan walls. Other than that, it's a pretty standard racing bike. I would give this a 5.4. How much does that, that, that's like a lot of money that. Specialized Pro retails at 6,250 pounds. I don't understand why someone would want to race a bike at that price. Like if you're a pro and you're getting stuff for free, yeah, sure. No, it's not a standard race bike, unless you're a pro. Standard race bike is a CAD 12. 5.4. 5.4, uh, I'm gonna rate it as Five out of 10. Next up, we've got Alexander from Slovenia's Bianchi. This bike was a risky secondhand purchase, ended up having to fix the carbon, but it was my first ever proper bike build and I'm proud of it. Matte finish, 105, Vision 30s, compact chain ring, 11 to 30 tooth cassette, 8.4 kilograms of pure fun, and I don't want to trade it at all. Oh, I like this, so he's put this together himself. Based on what he said, it's right at the top end of the, of the rating scale for me. Because if he loves this bike and it's got that connection to him, there can't, there, there's nothing I can ever say that makes this a better bike. Or I like, um, brilliant. I love a carbon repair. What did he have to, does he say what he had to repair? Yeah, ended up having to fix the carbon. I what just like it because it's like, recy it's recycling, isn't it? It's making, I, I love the fact you can repair a bike and how generally affordable it is to do. Maybe it's like Triggs Broom though, by repair carbon or fix the carbon, maybe he got a new frame. And I started with the only section which was fine was a bit of the rear chain stay, yeah. and then he built a whole bike. Rim brakes, uh, it's always good to see rim brakes. Alloy rim brakes would work. Yes, good. It's it's a it's a very well specced bike. Carbon chain rings, uh, sorry, compact even chain rings. I actually like good, good how the frame looks. And Italian bikes look good, right? They're just nearly good. always, except for the new Bianchi, which is like. It's more like traditional though, isn't it? It's like the sort of bikes that were coming out like 20 years ago, but in a good way, not in a bad way. You like that he's got SPDs. The, the best SPDs, the cheapo ones that are like 24 quid. <laughs> in that everyone, everyone ends up riding. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like that's, that's a great bike, I really yeah, like that. That's cool. That's, that's like, that is... Round seat post. Classic, modern-ish summer bike. Bang, you're not gonna go wrong with that. That's what you'd race. 6.6. Seven. 
Seven out of ten. Generous. It's all black as well, you know? It's like, it's just stealthy and lovely and matte. His name's Alexander, not Matt. Next up, we've got Chris's Vintage Steel Single Speed. Made under the badge name AC Gillett in Southampton Way, London. Single speed, 4218 Reynolds track bike with a Reynolds 531 steel frame. Circa 1959. The frame cost 250 quid on eBay. Was I robbed? A lot of bikes like this, a lot of steel frames are sold much, much cheaper. Mm -hmm. Just out of secondhand bike shops and that kind of thing. If you, you can find an absolute gem. Like if we went to recycle, not you know, re in, not in recycle London, your bike. Not, probably not in London, because they get snapped up. Yeah. bonkers expensive. Yeah. You can get a bargain. So you have bought it from someone who knows that there's probably people out there who are gonna spend a little bit more money. Yeah. So they, risk, they list it for two, 300 pounds, and they know they'll probably get it. But I, I don't know, I think I, I, if, as long as the steel is in good condition, Mm. which it probably well, potentially isn't because it's not stainless and it's really old. Uh, it, I, I don't think 250 pounds is bad for something that is probably really well made. I built it up with new components, wheels, etc. It weighs just under seven kilograms. I have a confession. That's so light. Track single speed. speed. I have a confession. The front end just felt weird when steering and I took it to my local bike shop, Albany Cycles in Coventry, where the mechanic diagnosed that I put the lower bearing cup in upside down in the headset. Riding lovely now though. It always looks weird when there's no seat post. Nice tan walls. However, the question I would have is, are those 700C wheels or is it like the weird size, which is very slightly different from 700C, which means you can't run 700C tires. There's, a, there's, an, there's like a vintage size of wheel, right. which I ended up on an old Pearson bike that uh, my granddad gave me. Bought some new tires for it, get it all set up when I was a teenager. And then it's like, oh no, this is weird. It's this weird wheel, wheel size, you're never gonna find tires. I'm gonna assume that a frame, that wheels from 1959 are not going to have lasted. I'm not a huge fan of wraparound bars. I've used them before and I always just think it feels a bit odd, even though I was actually potentially looking at getting a set. It like, it puts your um, weight too far back and you end up with no weight in your front wheel, which is fine on the cargo bike because there's weight at the front. Yeah. But it's weird on, on this or like those beach cruiser style bikes. Yeah. It's so easy to wash out your front wheel. It, I guess it's but, fine. Look how cool they look. It's fine if you're going like 10 kilometers an hour. It's mm. when you're going like, actually I want to hoon it home and you just lose that bit of stability. If it had a London commuter, flat bar. flixy flat bar with a slight riser that was narrow, I would give that probably nine out of 10. Uh, but because it doesn't, I'm going to give it seven and a half out of 10. Next up, we've got Martin from Oslo's Cinelli Vigorelli steel frame. I, uh, Cinelli has a soft spot in my heart. When I came back to cycling after a long hiatus, when I met you, yep. the only bike that I had was a fixed gear Chinelli Mash histogram bike. It was the most aggressive bike frame in the world. And then Chris Hall we, destroyed it on the roof of his car, which is why it. we it's sick. Here. Yeah, it's here. It's got a dent in it. Yeah. But because it's alloy, like it was all, it, the frame got twisted a bit and the dropouts like weren't, the wheel wasn't sitting in it properly. However, I think with a bit of very careful bending, that frame could come back to life. Uh, so he's got a <laughs> made for crit racing, but he's done 350 kilometer road race on it and it works really well. Size 59 frame is a big boy. Big boy. For Columbus cut. Columbus carbon fork. Handlebar is an NV aero bar, uh, which is 38 centimeters wide. Very narrow for a tall person. Envy road stem, 130 millimeters. Uh, seat post is Envy as well. It's got Pro Stealth saddle. I've actually been riding a Pro Stealth on my gravel bike at the moment. Wheel sets are from a Norwegian brand called Unas. Unas 55. I definitely didn't pronounce that right. No. SRAM force crank, Asioma pedals, SRAM rival AXS 1x12. Oh, so it's 1x. I've looked at this picture. I'm, 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 I'm like, just fucking get through the, de get, get through the details so we can mil, talk about it. 28 mil tires. Interesting mix of parts. But that is, that is a cool bike. That is, so, it looks like it's so aggressive and slammed, but he actually has some space underneath. So this is- That's a proper crit bike. So this is what you meant earlier when you were like, yeah. I wouldn't race a crit on the Specialized. You would race a crit on that. Yes, and that, that is be, what it's about. That would be fast as well. Yeah. What well, one by in crit makes sense. It's steel, so again, it makes sense. That's, that is, just, that is, a banger. That is a banger. That cha the silver chain ring, little bit pops of silver on the frame. This is 
top draw for me. I almost want to say that's a 10 out of 10. The only thing that goes against it is the fact it is the opposite end of the size spectrum for me and I wouldn't be able to have a go on it. And unfortunately for Martin, small bikes look better. <laughs> It doesn't, it looks like that wheelbase is short. Oh, there's more pictures. Look at him. He is a giant. That is a cool bike though. He's getting the highest rating so far. What's the highest rating we've done so far on this video? Like four out of 10, I think. I'm giving that 9.8 out of 10. That is a, uh, uh, a 9.5. He's, he's lost 0.2 because I can't have a go. Well, I, I guess I could. I could sit on the top tube and it would probably fit perfect for me. That's cool. <laughs> Next up is Simon's Carrera Crossfire 2 from Halfords. Schwalb Land Cruiser tires, which I assume he's added afterwards. This is my favorite ride, the cheapest bike I own, but also the most comfortable. Slate it as much as you like. I'm 42, it's comfortable, it doesn't hurt my back, and I love it. It's also going to get me through my first triathlon. That is proof that you don't need some fancy, stupid bike to have fun and enjoy it's pointing, biking as a hobby. Pointing at all of the walls. <laughs> <It's just everything. laughs> I love that he's gonna do a triathlon on that. It's got suspension and everything, that is mint. Mm. Uh, Having said that, can I can I critique? I don't wanna trash things for, for the sake of trashing them because it might not be the sort of bike that we ride. Yeah. The, I wish bikes like this didn't come with, with triple suspect <laughs> I wish bikes like this didn't come with a suspension fork because at price points like this the suspension fork is just heavy and doesn't give you much suspension but if you they if don't you work well enough but if you think typically these kind of bikes are harsh as hell that probably softens it up it's, it's actually not with it's, it's tires and it's yeah. no harsher than an aluminium frame you know like any anything we'd ride yeah I, I I stand by that. I wish they would not come with suspension for it. Firstly, it would be lighter. Secondly, it would probably cost less or they could upgrade something else on the bike if they had a just a bog standard fork. Like the wheels typically on these sort of bikes. Yeah. I honestly, I'm in love that he's gonna do a triathlon on that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the sort of thing that I would do where I kind of like two fingers up to the, the industry and go, you know, yes, you, you say I'm supposed to have a super expensive carbon TT bike and I'm gonna show up on a fucking Carrera with suspension. <laughs> Mud guards, makes sense, keeps the bike clean, keeps you a bit cleaner. One bottle cage, cause presumably he's not going out from a bazillion miles. I'm glad you enjoy the bike. Are we about to rate this higher than a Specialized Venge? I would like to. <laughs> I can't remember what I rated it though, so I can't. But you gave the Specialized <laughs> Venge a solid five. Oh, it was a five, wasn't it? Ah, oh, see, it's, for me, this this is that again though. This This is a five out of 10 for me because it's not for everyone but it's a really good bike. It's a good benchmark bike for whether bikes are good or not. Mm, five out of 10. <laughs> I was like, why are we shaking? Next up, we've got John's Cube Axial WS 2021. It's a female bike because he's short as f <laughs> This is evidence that the bike industry needs to make smaller bikes for people. <laughs> uh, he says, pink helps with the Scottish clouds for visibility. I haven't thought about it in depth. However, I, feel like it would be better if bike brands did away with gender specific stuff because Bike Fit James fits men on women's saddles, women on men's saddles, men on women's bikes and women on men's bikes. So brands could probably narrow down the things that actually matter to men and women into very, very small product categories and bikes and saddles definitely not one of them. Paint jobs, I quite like the way that the, the paint cuts through it. Everything else is pretty stealthy. It's almost a bit gray, or maybe that's just because it's Scotland. The setting is beautiful. Shimano M520 SPD Clipis pedals. This bike doesn't excite me. However, it does open the conversation about bike sizing, mm -hmm. but we're rating specifically just a bike. Uh, I'm gonna have to give it a 4.5. Not that exciting to me. Uh, it, it's 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 in the middle for me. It's in the, I like that it's like a bit stealthy. I quite like the paint job. 5.5. That's all for this episode. I don't know how long this video has ended up being because <laughs> it's a new format for us. So please be kind if it's 40 minutes long. We have no idea how long we've been sat here. We've been talking for a long time. Mm. I've enjoyed it. I'm going to enjoy watching this back. If you want to be involved in the next episode of Rate My Ride, then please submit your things to ratemyride at cavemedia.co.uk. Please subscribe for more and thank you for watching.